a talk. We will talk about an investigation of poorly studied open cluster NGC 1746 using multicolor photometric and Gaia DR2 astrometric data. Please start. Yeah. Hello. Uh, good afternoon to all. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to present my work here. Myself, Devendra Beast. Today, I'm uh, going to deliver a talk on this object using multicolor photometry and Gaia DR2 astrometry. Uh, this is my fl uh, flow of talk actually. And now, next, uh, first, I will start from here. Um, star clusters has classified into three groups globular clusters, galactic cl uh, open clusters, and OB association. And the location of uh, open clusters are generally found here in the disk area uh, in the spiral arm. And global clusters are uh, in the hello region, uh, presented in the hello region, and OB stars are also presented in the spiral arm. Now, our purpose to uh, uh, study of this object to determine all the fundamental parameters like uh, radius, age, distance, reddening, metallicity of uh, open cluster, and uh, 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 and on the basis of uh, uh, membership probability, our aim to uh, see the dynamical behavior of this object and uh, also to understand the orbital picture of this object, how this object is orbiting in our Milky Way galaxy, and also. Uh, to uh, check the ap apex of uh, this object. And uh, for that, we have uh, used Gaia DR2 database. And the second uh, data release, DR2 of Gaia mission, contains 1.7 billion sources. And it was made public on 2018, April 24. And this Gaia mission has uh, contains the uh, some parallaxes and three band photometry, G, GPP, GRP, and proper motions. And this G band covers the whole optical range from 330 to 1050 nanometer, while GBP and GRP band covers 330 to 680 and 630 to 1050 nanometer. And this data is essentially complete in between 12 to 17 magnitude in Gaia band. And uh, uh, the next uh, upcoming uh, data of the series uh, coming in the next month, EDR3 will uh, release on December 2020. And, uh, DR3 will release on 2022. These data are most uh, awaiting, actually, in, in uh, order to uh, see, the, in order to understand the astrometry, photometry, and the spectroscopy of uh, uh, various sources. And uh, uh, with uh, Gaia DR2, we have used some other data sets, WISE, APASS, and PANISTARS data. Now, proper motion is uh, uh, very important uh, to understand the uh, open clusters. Actually, proper motion is the astrometric measure of uh, uh, of uh, angular change of uh, uh, in the apparent uh, places of uh, stars or any other celestial object uh, as seen from the center of mass of the solar system. And the proper motion is uh, important because uh, uh, we can discuss uh, any star uh, on, on the basis of the space velocity. Actually, space velocity is uh, depend on transverse velocity and radial velocity. Transverse velocity is related to proper motion and radial velocity, uh, we can estimate it uh, using spectroscopic observations. And uh, space, space velocity is basically a com combination of these two. And in order to understand, understand the <clears throat> orbital picture of any star or uh, any stellar system, these two velocities are really important. So this is the importance of proper motion data. And the other important uh, uh, implication from here is that uh, we, we have made vector point diagram of this object, and we are uh, uh, we are studying in this area, uh, and here we, we uh, saw so many clusters are here. And uh, today I am discussing this object in the uh, inside the red circle. And here, in, uh, near to this uh, object, two open clusters are also overlapping. We are also looking for these objects too. But here today I am uh, discussing on this object and uh, the corresponding color magnitude diagram of this uh, these stars. You can see here for NGC 1758. And we uh, also estimated uh, the proper motion in right ascension and declination. And after uh, selecting stars from here, uh, we, we draw a circle. And this circle is the compromise uh, uh, between uh, the losing cluster members with uh, poor proper motion and the contamination of field stars. So uh, for that, uh, we also estimated the membership probability for individual stars. And we used the method given by Balagyor. And uh, according to this method, uh, the, uh, actually uh, every star has two frequency distribution functions. 
the uh, cluster distribution function and this is the field star distribution function and this is the total distribution function where nc and nf are the normalized number of cluster members and field members and the total uh, probability of i star is uh, the ratio of uh, phi ci divided by phi i we have used this method recently for uh, a sample of binary clusters uh, also and uh, you can see in this diagram after estimating membership probability you can see how we have separated cluster stars uh, from the field region stars they all are field region stars which are clearly separated from the cluster region and these are the cluster members and uh, in this way we find 244 uh, stars as a cluster member in this and this is radial density profile radius is very important factor to determine the reliable cluster fundamental parameter and uh, to uh, understand uh, this uh, profile first we draw so many concentric circles around the cluster center and then we estimated density in each annulus divided by a uh, number divided by its area and we fit a king's profile also here you can see smooth line is the king profile and after fitting king profile we estimated some structural parameters also and uh, according to this distribution uh, this uh, density uh, uh, becomes flat after a certain point that means the cluster density merge into field star density so this point we can take as cluster radius 5.5 arcmate is the cluster radius and 1.8 is the core radius and we also check the extinction lot what's this cluster area after matching various uh, survey data with gaia astrometry and uh, you can see various color color diagrams here and the linear fit is also uh, what's performed uh, in these diagrams and we uh, estimated the uh, color excess ratio and which are looking very good uh in the sense uh, they, they are showing the normal interstellar extinction towards this cluster area that means there are no gas or dust towards the area of this object and using this j minus j minus k color color diagram we have estimated interstellar reddening also and now uh, we fitted uh, the theoretical isochrone to observed color magnitude diagram and we used the uh, isochrone given by marigo et al of solar metallicity and uh, you can see the, all the uh, open uh, black open circles are the probable cluster members which we have estimated in this analysis and red dots are the uh, matched stars with Canton Goodin. Canton Goodin previously gave some membership for few stars but uh, this data is limited to 18 magnitude but we are giving uh, number of stars towards the, the, the center end also, which uh, is very helpful to understand the star formation scenario in clusters or uh, our Milky Way galaxy. Uh, from here, we estimated cluster is 145 million year and the distance is 940. And using the Gaia parallax of uh, the cluster members, we uh, also estimated uh, distance from here, and the both distances are showing very good agreement with each other. Uh, a function, uh, actually initial mass function, basically mass function is very important to understand the star formation and stellar evolution history. A function which describes the frequency distribution of stellar mass is called the stellar mass function. And uh, you can see this is the uh, Sulpeter power law. Sulpeter had uh, first quantified and well established the power law, used stars heavier than one solar mass. Here, uh, this is power law, x is mass function slope, and dn is number of star, in particular mass gain dm. And he has found mass function slope is around 1.35. And Miller and Zylo extended his work for less than one solar mass and they found slope uh, is around zero. And uh, after that, many astronomers came into action. Kuropa in 2002 uh, distributed the uh, cluster region into two different masses higher than 0 0.5 solar mass and below than 0 0.5 solar mass. And they found uh, above 0 0.5 solar mass, the uh, power law is strictly followed to Sulpeter's rule and uh, below than that uh, they, they, they found some flatter mass function slope and uh, Chabrier also used uh, stars heavier than one solar mass and they found the slope around one so overall above the one solar mass the mass distribution criteria is okay and uh, many models suggested that it is uh, uh, satisfying the theory uh, given by Edwin Sulpeter but uh, below than 0 0.5 solar mass it's really uh, not uh, certain how it start distributed towards the center end and uh, th which is uh, very important to, to know uh, to understand about the star formation process so our aim to check open star cluster uh, 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 to, to observe cl clusters deep um, into deep photometric bands and see uh, the uh, clusters below than 0.5 solar mass as well how the mass function slope is changing 
uh, in uh, uh, with with other astrophysical parameters or in the different uh, background as well so we uh, plotted here luminosity function and mass function for this object and for this we used uh, color magnitude diagram and uh, first we uh, converted gaia magnitude into absolute magnitude using uh, distance modulus and then we used the theoretical Marigo to transform luminosity function into mass function and in this way our mass function slope is also uh, uh, following the sulfeter rule within uh, uncertainty and uh, from here we estimated total mass of this system 465 solar mass and mean mass is around 1.78 solar mass and uh, dynamical we estimated dynamical relaxation time and uh, relaxation time is also coming less than its age or the dynamical evolution parameter which is uh, the ratio of age and relaxation time is coming much much greater than one this study indicates that this object is dynamically relaxed and we plotted mass segregation um, um, mass segregation to see the mass segregation uh, effect we first distributed the cluster area into three different mass ranges as you can see and then we plotted this uh, profile actually mass segregation is uh, basically due to the equipartition of energy amongst the cluster members and during the during a close encounter of cluster members a star exchanges their energy and momentum uh, each other and uh, uh, and uh, energy can be exchanged in either direction so there is a statistical tendency to equalize kinetic energy during an encounter which is uh, known as equipartition of energy and this encounter continue begin until the system become relaxed and uh, this figure indicates that these massive stars and fainter stars are uh, are looking uh, some um, distance away with each other that means massive stars are concentrating towards the cluster core and while lower mass stars moving outward from this system so this uh, cluster is showing mass segregation effect and cluster orbit since stars are uh, orbiting uh, toward in the galactic plane where uh, uh, the, the uh, galactic plane and uh, the, uh, the the also uh, star uh, the gal uh, galactic orbits are very helpful to understand the uh, the evolution and the formation process of star clusters or the evolution of stars, galaxies, or uh, any other astronomical objects. So, orbits so, are really, yeah, for that. And uh, you can see this is the uh, up side view, and this is the upper view, and this is the time period of uh, cluster orbit. And we have used uh, the Ellen and Sant Island model for this. And we also shown the apex uh, information for this. And uh, this apex is uh, so, uh, showing. Uh, actually, the apex demonstrates the direction of this object in our Milky Way galaxy, and we estimated uh, various uh, kinematical parameters and make a catalog for this object here. In conclusion section, we have given a lot of uh, kinematical uh, parameters which we have estimated uh, first time for this object. And uh, yeah, this is thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So that's a lot of information on this cluster. But I'm curious, why why do you study this cluster? Why? What? What? I mean, uh, is this open cluster very special in some way? Sorry, I work on actual galactic stuff, so I I don't quite. Are you hearing me? Uh, can you re repeat? Yeah, actually, this object is not studied well in the future. And uh, as we know, to understand the star formation scenario in different part of our Milky Way galaxy, it's really important to understand the cluster behavior in different part. Actually, open clusters uh, so very wide range on range of their ages from very beginning to the age of galaxy. So it's really important to check. Uh, uh, star uh, cluster in different part of our Milky Way galaxy according to their distance or age. That's why we have uh, taken uh, this object to see uh, how stars are uh, distributed in this area. So we can, uh, after discussing this object, we can understand uh, how stars are distributed and what is the star formation criteria to this region. So uh, this object is really helpful for that. Actually. I see. Okay. Are there questions from local? Participants? What? what? Oh no, I'm asking around. So I'm okay. also curious uh, about uh, your metallicity determination. Actually, uh, we have uh, the Gaia DR2 also, and uh, uh, Gaia DR2 contains uh, metallicity and radial velocity as well. So we have uh, 
selected probable cluster members on the basis of membership probability and uh, check the uh, metallicity value from there the mean value of metallicity we have uh, uh, taken actually all right uh, so are there any further questions if not then uh, let's thank the speaker thank you so now we